All right, so it looks like we have some styling to do. So now, even though this is called footer, it doesn't necessarily mean that this will be the only footer on the page. If we go back to developer.mozilla.org, there's a clear description up at the top. So it represents a footer for its nearest sectioning content or sectioning root element. A footer typically contains information about the author of the section, copyright data, or links to related documents. So down here it says that the footer element is not sectioning content and therefore doesn't introduce a new section to the outline. So that makes sense. It's basically outside of the table of contents for screen readers or any other software that's creating an index of the page. So it could be used within the context of an article, or it could be used, like we're using it now, in the context of the entire page. What this implies is that when we're editing our styles for this, it doesn't make sense to add the styles to the footer element directly, because multiple footers could be used. So we need to add a class. Let's call this site footer. Now that we have a class for this, we can begin creating our CSS content. Now we could just start piling this in the styles.scss file, but since we know what this is, we're building a component, why don't we just create a new component file to include this CSS? So let's jump over to our project, and in our components folder, we'll create a new file. Remember this is going to be a partial, so we'll add an underscore. And then we'll open this up in our editor. Let's create a selector. And now we can add our styles in here. So if we look at this side by side, I'm gonna exit out of the Mozilla page for now. We see that this is a dark gray. Now we could do a sample of this color from the design, but let's take a look and see how different it is from the other dark gray that we've used. So if we zoom out here, the other place that we used the dark gray was up here as a background color to use until we have an image. Now if I remember correctly, we got that color by doing a color sampling from this image. So it feels like, this color down here is going to be the true dark gray. So let's change out the dark gray variable that we're using in SAS so that it includes this color instead. And then we'll use that variable to color the background of this footer element. So I'll use the color picker tool and then we'll figure out what the hexadecimal value is. Here it is, we'll copy that. And then let's go back to our folder structure and we're gonna need to change this in the variables file. So we're here under our SAS folder, and I'll open up variables, and we're gonna change the dark gray here. Save it. If we jump back to our browser, and we go down to where we're using the dark gray, and we refresh, we'll see that it's a slightly darker gray, but it still looks good. And so now in our site footer CSS, we can use this variable. So like we did before, we'll use the background color property, and we'll use dark gray. All right, if we save this and scroll up in our example page and refresh, we'll see a dark gray background now. However, our text is invisible because it's the same dark gray. 